The FAA is now investigating a near collision mid-air between two planes Sunday, this over Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Pilot of Allegiant Flight 485 bound for Lexington, Kentucky, was forced to take evasive action after nearly hitting a Gulfstream business jet. A flight attendant on that Allegiant jet was hurt. Passenger Jer Jerrica Thacker, seen here on the flight, said it felt like the plane went straight up she was visibly upset after seeing the injured attendant who Thacker says fell backward as the plane ascended. CNN correspondent Gabe Cohen joins me now. Gabe, Gabe, first, tell me how these jets got so close together. There's so many systems, fail safe, fail safe, some automatic, uh, humans involved in air traffic control. How did this happen? Yeah, and that's the big question that the FAA is investigating at this point. Let me lay out, though, exactly how this played out, what we know at this point. So Allegiant, this flight takes off from Fort Lauderdale on Sunday, uh, headed for Kentucky, right around the Orlando area. It's about 23,000 feet up when suddenly the pilot is told to go east. We have this statement uh, from the FAA explaining what happened. They basically said that air traffic control in Miami directed the pilot to turn eastbound over the ocean at that 23,000 feet uh, at foot altitude when it crossed in front of a northbound Gulfstream business jet. So at that point, these two aircraft are headed in the same path. But both pilots fortunately got an automated mm. alert that yeah. basically there was another plane flying at the same altitude and immediate action needed to be taken. Bear in mind, they were about two and a half miles apart. That may sound like a big distance, Close but this, fast. yeah, this is airborne speed. highway traffic speeds. Yep. We're talking about seconds, not minutes yep. here. Both of those pilots, though, took those evasive actions. The Allegiant plane went up, uh, the jet went down, and they were able to avoid a disaster. But we know that the Allegiant's maneuver, that pilot's maneuver, was dramatic enough uh, that it injured at least one flight attendant on board. They had to turn back to Fort Lauderdale uh, for, so that person could get medical attention. Yep. And, and remember, it's rare that an incident like this, a pilot's maneuver, ends in an injury. We sometimes hear about it with turbulence, yeah. but this is really rare. I mean, they had to move quickly here. So, anecdotally, it seems like we have seen a remarkable number of these in recent months, both in the air and on the ground. Statistically, are these near misses happening more often? Yeah, well, that's been the conversation throughout the year, and we have heard people like Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg talk about early in the year a, a surge in close calls, especially incursions involving at least one plane that was sitting on a runway. And we know the FAA has faced intense scrutiny, uh, claims that air traffic control is understaffed using outdated systems, and they have taken uh, precautions, taken measures to address this. They held that safety summit you might remember earlier in the year. They added new guide guidelines for air traffic control and uh, stood up a new regular training program to try to make sure that air traffic controllers stay sharp, that they don't yep. make mistakes, that we don't have close calls like the incident we just saw. But, but remember, as much as experts and officials in this field tout the safety measures and the safety track record that's in place for the airline industry. We're talking about an FAA that has not had a confirmed administrator for more than a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, President Biden tried to appoint uh, a com uh, administrator uh, that was then resigned under scrutiny. And so there are a lot of questions when you look at an incident like this. Yeah. Uh, as to whether some of the changes they've put in place are working. How long can they keep that really, uh, really good track record well, in we, place? We've also heard the Transportation Secretary talk about how many more air traffic controllers they, they, they want and need to hire. Gabe Cohen, thanks so much. So what was it like on that jet as this happened? Joining me now, Jerrica Thacker, who, as we mentioned earlier, was on board. J Jerrica, th thanks so much for joining. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad other folks on that flight are okay. First, tell us what it was like as the pilot had to make this emergency move out of the way of this other jet. Well, at that time, we thought it was turbulence, which was still scary at the time because I had never been through that. But when he came on the intercom and let us know that we were actually trying to miss the other airplane, it was like it intensified all that fear that happened. And it was like a roller coaster the way that we had to go up and down to miss the plane and then level back out to the hot we were supposed to be at. Goodness. What, what was the reaction on board from yourself and from others when you heard the pilot say, that's what I had to do. I had to steer us out of the way. 
people started crying. You could hear people mm. praying. And everyone who was at a window seat started to close their windows because everybody was too scared to look outside of what was around mm. us. Goodness. Now, you say you saw the flight attendant who, who was thrown during this maneuver get, get hurt. What, what, what did you see? Well, when I, after I looked over, after we had finally stabled out, I saw that two flight attendants were on the ground. And when one got up, the other one stayed on the ground. And the one who got up said, oh, my God, she hit her head. So mm. she stayed laying on the ground for about five minutes when they finally were able to get her up and move her back to the back of the plane and then asked if there was any medical professionals on board, which they eventually found one and brought her back with that injured flight attendant. And did they, were they able to find a doctor on board who could take care of her immediately? There was a woman on board who went back with her. I'm not sure what they did back there, but she did go back to help her out. Now, as I understand it, this incredibly was only the second time you've been on a plane, your second flight. Yes. What, what, what were, first of all, I'm glad you're well. How are you doing now and what are you thinking? Um, I'm doing a lot better that it's still it's not like I go through the day with that in the back of my head but when you lay down to go to bed it's still in the back of your head there that the thing that you almost went through the fact that I could have died in a few seconds and still talking about it now I just now got to the point where I could actually talk about what actually happened during the incident, avoiding the plane, because it was kind of blanked out in my mind, and I didn't realize sure. when I was talking to people about it that I was completely skipping the actual yeah. incident. Yeah, that's, listen, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, often a typical reaction to, to, to trauma. Can, can I ask you, first of all, get the help you need. Talk to folks about it. That's important. Do you think you'll get up back on a plane someday? There is a very slim chance that I will step onto another plane, but I can tell you if it ever does come to that point, I will not be going on Allegiant. Mm, goodness. Did they reach out to you, apologize? No, we did receive a $100 voucher for a future flight, Oof. but wow. there was no like real communication with Allegiant at all. Goodness. Besides well, this... when my mom called to try to talk to me and they lied about what happened. They lied how? Well, my mother called once we landed because we needed help to get a rental car because we didn't have that kind of money on us. And so my mom called and was like, is there any way you guys can help my family get a rental car to get home? Because they were on that airplane that almost hit another airplane. And Allegiant told my mom, you have the wrong information. The mm. plane was turned around because the pilot got sick and hung up on her. Really? Goodness gracious. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's certainly not fair to you. Uh, listen, you know, statistically, it's still the safest way to travel. We, we, we know that. But, but boy, having gone what you go through, I, I just hope, uh, I hope you get over it soon. And I'm glad you're safe now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining us, Jerrica Thacker.